It is now my privilege to introduce to you a double who, father of two current UVA undergraduates, and of course, as you all know by now, general counsel and secretary of Netflix, David Hyman. David, oh yeah, go ahead, do it. <laughs> David grew up outside of Washington, D.C. He attended the University of Virginia for his bachelor's degree, graduating in 1988. He served as a campaign worker for Chuck Robb's senatorial bid and now Congressman Don Byers, but then Lieutenant Gover Gubernatorial bid, both in Virginia. Both campaigns were successful, so David is 2 and 0. Oh. <clears throat> that might be a lesson to you to quit while you're ahead. Um, <laughs> In between his stints as a campaign worker, David spent some time out west in Colorado to ski before returning home. He began UVA Law School in 1990. Actually, he transferred, which I just learned today, from George Mason University Law School uh, and graduated in 1993. David spent cumulatively six years in private practice at established law firms. He spent time first at Aaron Fox in Washington, D.C., and later at Morrison and Forrester in San Francisco. These names don't mean a lot to you now, probably, but they will a year from now. Uh, and then he departed from the world of the establishment to the world of startups. Uh, and David will tell you that he was excited by and risk-taking uh, in the new and uncertain terrain and exciting legal challenges that startups uh, posed. He joined the online grocer with home delivery service Webvan, which needed a real estate lawyer to help them find warehouses for their food. Uh, and David had been a real estate lawyer. So he served there as senior corporate counsel from 1990 to 2000, and then as general counsel from 2000 to 2002. Webvan presaged the entry into the market of more familiar now e-commerce vendors like Amazon Fresh. This was the burgeoning home delivery industry, and David was in on the ground floor. He was then tapped to serve as general counsel to a small but budding film company in Los Gatos, California that delivered DVDs via mail to a growing collection of subscribers. I, you might have heard of it. Uh, it's called Netflix. Um, as the company expanded its distribution network, which now reached 130 million subscribers, David's role at Netflix required him to put to work all that he had learned in the past and many, many new skills and areas of expertise. As he has noted, when he started at Netflix, he was the only only lawyer. Today, he manages 300 lawyers, and he needs them all. As general manager and secretary, he manages all of the company's legal and public policy matters, and he has played an indispensable role in propelling the now film streaming giant into the heart of the entertainment industry. So in other words, David is directly responsible for the countless hours both you and I have sunk into our favorite shows <laughs> and movies. For me, at the moment, that takes the form of a fairly unhealthy obsession with Peaky Blinders, <laughs> which I highly recommend. Uh, over the last several years, David has been crucial to facilitating Netflix's expansion to Europe uh, in 2012 and its eventual placement of its European, Middle East, and African headquarters in Amsterdam in 2015, which earned him the 2018 Holland on the Hill Heineken Award, which he was the fifth recipient, an award which acknowledges the substantial contribution to the improvement of U.S.-Netherlands economic relationships. So rest assured, David has also contributed internationally nationally toward the cause of procrastination. <laughs> David describes uh, the internet TV sensation, which is uh, a more recent uh, Netflix development as well, as a growing global phenomenon that has ripple effects through virtually all aspects of the media landscape. And he describes the Netflix's original production of content as, quote, its biggest driver of legal growth. And his work certainly places him and has placed him for the last decade and a half at the vanguard of this new and developing legal arena and of a company which has maneuvered and grown and changed strategies over the years in response to new technological opportunities and challenges. Perhaps he will say more about this, but I hope that his UVA law experience and education has played a part in preparing him to take on this innovative role at this innovative company and to take it wherever it has needed to go. I know from personal experience that it has made him equally fluent talking about real estate, 
corporate governance, and Bitcoin, not to mention how to take a selfie. And our property faculty would be thrilled to hear him talk about how really everything does, perhaps everything full stop, not just everything legal, begin with property. And the last thing I'll say about David, which I thought was just wonderful, is that he was here last spring, uh, and he had a little extra time, and he learned that the libel show, which you all will learn about shortly, if not already, which is the kind of carnivalesque show that our students put on every spring where they make fun of us, uh, and the law more generally, uh, was going on that evening. And he was down at uh, Greenberries in Barracks Road and learned about the libel show and decided just to come up and see it for himself. And I take that to be a sign of a person who enjoyed his law school experience and is dedicated as as an alum to coming back for any and all occasions, not just when he's invited as the august speaker at orientation. So it is a true delight to be joined by such a distinguished lawyer, entrepreneur, and alumnus. Please join me in welcoming Mr. David Hyman. Wow, quite an introduction. Thank you, Risa. Uh, I'm very honored to be welcoming you all to the University of Virginia School of Law. You know, in preparing for this uh, speech, I thought about what would be the most helpful thing for you to be successful here at Virginia. So then I thought, okay, I'll spend the next 20 minutes uh, giving you spoilers on the new Netflix originals that are coming out. <laughs> And that way you won't spend your time binge watching your way through class. Um, but then I thought, you know what, um, you'd probably just go to playing Fortnite or maybe watching Amazon or Hulu. So kind of in my own self-interest, I've decided to give you a little bit more directly applicable advice so that I hope that you continue to be loyal Netflix subscribers. <laughs> Also, by the way, standing up here and giving this speech is quite a trip. Um, in some ways, in my mind's eye in particular, I feel like I'm closer to you guys than the old law school grad that's standing up here today. Um, but somehow, over time, I've become much more aware, unfortunately, that I am seasoned. Um, I just uh, attended my 25th law school reunion. Um, as Risa pointed out, my two kids are now here at Mr. Jefferson's Academical Village, and what little hair I have left on my head is, is very, very gray. <laughs> So despite this seasoning, you know, my heart remains youthfully connected to the University of Virginia. It, it is truly a special place. Um, it combines deep academic rigor, the practical application of learning, and a wonderful environment in which to make lifelong friendships and professional relationships. Uh, more importantly, perhaps, there is a commitment at this university, um, really from its inception, to focusing on and pursuing high ideals. Um, and while that pursuit, as President Jim Ryan recently noted, is not always perfect, it is infectious. Um, and every time I return to this university, I sense it um, and I'm inspired by it. So I can assure you that you've chosen your law school well. The learnings and connections and memories that you have here will positively influence you for a lifetime. But in order to assure that that's your experience in coming out of UVA, I thought I'd give you a little advice going in. So first, and you've heard this from all the speeches today, be collaborative. Um, as the dean noted, I was a transfer student. It took me two times in a year at another law school to come back here. So that should give you an idea of just how special I think this place is. It is truly special because of its culture. And it is a collaborative environment, not a competitive environment. It's really, though, however, up to each of you to maintain that. So as you go forward, share notes, do good outlines for your study groups, and help each other understand what is often complex and anachronistic study of law. This will only make for a more congenial academic environment. And trust me, law school can be hard enough as is. But it will also help you become a better lawyer. In my opinion, the ability to collaborate effectively among and across individuals and teams is a key factor in success and is a trait that was honed and forged for me here at UVA. And it's this collaboration that helps make UVA law grads some of the most sought after and successful lawyers in our profession. 
Second, participate. In some ways, like being cold called in a class, you'll be forced to participate, which may not be the optimal experience. In fact, I still remember the first time I was cold called on a class, and it happened to be contracts as well. In a moment of nervous anticipation, I asked the professor a clarifying question in response. He looked at me quizzically, then looked at the class roster and called upon someone else. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like a scene out of the paper chase. The good news is that didn't happen here at UVA. Um, it was a bit traumatic, and it certainly had a lasting impression on me. But I was nonetheless undaunted and figured out how to meaningfully participate both in and outside the classroom. Your participation doesn't have to be strictly academic, and you shouldn't overprogram yourself. The academics of law school are hard. But find a few things you enjoy and engage with them and your classmates deeply. This can be clinics, it can be internships, journals, affinity groups, and of course, softball and Feb Club. These will render lifelong benefits. Some of my most valued and important personal and professional relationships were developed by being an active participant in law school. Third, be humble and prepare to be humbled. You are smart and accomplished and so is everybody else around you. You are a class of diverse backgrounds and experiences. Many of you come to the school from Wall Street or consulting. Some of you have climbed Denali or swam with the seals at Coronado. Others are fresh out of university. Some of you have strong beliefs and opinions about the world and the people in it. Others may still be searching. Some of you have traveled the world or grown up abroad. Some of you, like I was, will have just left the suburban house you grew up in. As such, you will bring different perspectives to the same issues or discussion. Nonetheless, if you approach the study of law and your overall law school experience with humility, that is, being willing to entertain different opinions honestly and openly, I believe you would be better positioned to gain a deeper appreciation for the drivers underlying our legal system and the world in which it operates. I was humbled early on at UVA. As a transfer student, I got some preferential treatment on picking classes, and I got into a very small weekend seminar on civil rights, and it was mostly reserved for three L's. I remember in one of our first sessions uh, discussing a particular line of cases, I believe it was on school desegregation. A fellow student engaged the professor so deeply on the issue, I wasn't even sure I had read the same cases. To this day, I continue to be humbled by that experience, as that very student has gone on to be a Supreme Court clerk, a law school professor, a dean of the Harvard Graduate School of Education, a noted speaker, author, and now, of course, the ninth president of the University of Virginia. <laughs> there are amazing people here, and you will learn a lot from them. So as you embark upon your first year at the university, if you collaborate, participate, and be humble in your approach here, I have no doubt but that your, ex your experience here will be successful. And you will achieve what I believe to be the ultimate goal. That is to expand and deepen your perspective of the world around you and in a way only a trained lawyer can do. This will put you in a great position to leave here prepared to effectively address many of the challenges we face in the business world, the political world, as well as society at large. Now your departure from the Harrison Law Grounds is a few years away, but I'm sure many of you are already thinking about life after law school. So here's a few takeaways from my post-graduation experience. First of all, don't be concerned if you haven't a clue as to what type of law you want to practice or if you want to practice law at all. I didn't. Um, and also, it's OK if you really know what you want to be focused on, but just be prepared for change. If my experience is at all representative, your choices will change a few times during your career. And your choices may be driven by silly ideas or unexpected events. For example, I recall when I was a summer associate, I was rotating through various practice groups, and I was assigned to the litigation team. I was given an urgent research project to find several supporting cases in a matter that the firm was handling. I scurried off to the law library, and you guys got to remember, it's 1992. This is the age of VHS tapes and blockbuster video, something you may have seen on Wikipedia. 
Anyhow, I had to use real books. Uh, I rummaged through encyclopedias and case books. I shepherdized to find more cases. And having found about a dozen cases, I ran off proudly to the partner's office with case books in tow. I sat there as he read through the cases. Of the dozen or so that I presented to him, he chose two. He slammed the other 10 case books shut, piled them up in my arms till I could hardly see, and he sent me back to the law library to find more. There was no real sense of collaboration with this partner. The next day, I pretty much chose to be a transactional lawyer. <laughs> um, and I decided to be a real estate attorney, partially because everything begins with real estate, but more because I enjoyed being in Aspen, Colorado as a ski bum. And I had learned from my law school classmate, Dave Burke, that the, the law firm of Holland and Hart had an office there and that the only practice group that they had was real estate. And so I figured, what better to do than be in real estate? And by the way, it's transferable anywhere you want to go. So be prepared for and embrace change. Second, learn to take risk and live with ambiguity. Lawyers by nature are pretty much a risk averse bunch. In fact, during law school, you'll spend a lot of time issue spotting. That is essentially identifying risks. In fact, in some instances, you'll get a better grade if you identify more risks. And the key to me for being a great lawyer is really knowing the risks to really worry about and advising your clients on which risks are worth taking and getting comfortable with the inevitable ambiguity you'll face. I found that many lawyers are good at telling clients all about the risks and then leaving it pretty much up to the clients to make those decisions. In order to be good at advising your clients, however, you have to gain a broad perspective on what happens in the real world. How judges, lawmakers, and regulators act, not merely what the law says. And in so doing, you will provide a much better service to your clients and you will hone your intuition around risks and get comfortable with ambiguity. In many ways, my own career has been built on learning to deal with risk and living with ambiguity. In 1999, I left the relative certainty of big law firm life for pretty much the only internet company that was looking for a real estate attorney. And that was Webvan, which was a pioneer in internet grocery. We were leasing space and doing development of large distribution centers, so my skills in real estate were applicable. But the full scope of my role, however, was very much up in the air when I took the job. I was the third lawyer in the door, and we had a ton of work to do. I quickly engaged in construction and leasing deals, but I also had to manage marketing deals, business development transactions, advertising law, truck leasing, transportation regulation compliance, as well as dealing with securities and corporate law matters. I joined in August, and we went public in November. So that gives you just an idea of how quickly things moved. And there were not a lot of resources at the ready for me to use. So I had to figure out pretty quickly what issues mattered and what risks were important. About a year after I was at Webvan, the general counsel left and I got a nod to take his place. We had just merged with our largest competitor and together we were trying to make two flawed businesses survive. That didn't work out and in 2001 we declared bankruptcy. I stayed on and navigated the business through the liquidation. So in the span of about two years, I saw an entire life cycle of a company from IPO to bankruptcy. And at the same time, I had managed to morph my career from being a dirt lawyer to a public company general counsel. I was also unemployed. <laughs> it was 2002 and the economy was still reeling from the bursting of the first dot-com bubble. And I hadn't gained so much experience to be a hot commodity on the GC recruiting circuit. But I really enjoyed consumer-facing businesses, or B2C as we used to call them. The breadth of issues and the pace and excitement of trying new things was fun. And it seemed to fit my personality well. So I engaged a headhunter to try to find me a new gig. So my headhunter told me about this position with a company that used the internet to mail rental DVDs to people around the country. But the office was located about 50 miles from my house, so I almost didn't go because of the commute. And the fact that my friends all thought the concept was silly, they said, how could you beat Blockbuster? Didn't help either. <laughs> so, so nonetheless, I needed interview experience because I hadn't been interviewing, so I figured it was least worth me going down there to get some practice. Well, it's certainly glad I went. 
16 years later, I'm still making that same commute, um, and it's been an amazing ride. While we're no longer a startup, we're still pioneering and dealing with lots of ambiguity along the way. The company has been incredibly dynamic, and the legal issues um, we face are no less so. Over the years, I've had the distinction of taking the company public, raising debt, defending against activist Carl Icahn, testifying before Congress, getting federal legislation passed, by the way, with the help of a fellow law school classmate. I've reviewed patents for prosecution and defended consumer class actions. I've negotiated music rights with collecting societies and developed some of the first streaming content deals. I've helped launch our service in over 100 countries on a single day and manage the uncertainty of the legal and regulatory issues that entails. So when I say get comfortable with risk and uncertainty, I speak from a lot of experience. None of this I learned at law school, nor were there any books or experts to fully rely upon. But I will say that my time here at Virginia did teach me to think in a unique manner and provided me with confidence to lean in and tackle any, any issue and address ambiguity in a way that was manageable and it was also exciting and invigorating. So learn to embrace risk and uncertainty. So lastly, on my short list of takeaways, learn to be more inclusive. We live in a time of great discord and intolerance around all kinds of political and social issues. Just one year ago today, we saw a vile eruption of intolerance here in Charlottesville. Despite what I expect is that all of you here are tolerant and inclusive, we have unconscious biases. It's important to learn about these, to learn about microaggressions and privilege. As such, you should go outside your comfort zone to learn about others and their perspectives. Become an ally for those different than you and take the sense of justice that arises from the study of law to improve society and, risk intoler and reduce intolerance wherever your career path takes you. I'm very proud of the fact that in growing a global team from one to over 300, we have done so in a manner that promotes diversity and inclusion. My team at Netflix comprises 66% women and more than 30% people of color. We are seen as a leader on the issue within the company and it's a priority area for me. We have approached diversity and inclusion with high ideals. And while we are not perfect, we hope that in some meaningful way, this pursuit will continue to resonate within the company and with luck more broadly across the entertainment and legal industry. So finally, I want to close with a short sizzle, uh, short sizzle wheel that in a slightly sappy way captures the pride I have in working for Netflix and the opportunity that this law school has afforded me in playing a small part in the history of the evolution of entertainment. But before that, I want to wish you all well in your first year. I hope that your experience at the University of Virginia empowers you to achieve some of your aspirations. It certainly has for me. Thank you very much.